Um, so what point in, in, in Ray's life are we going to rejoin her? Well, we're 15 years out from Rise of Skywalker. Right. So we're kind of post-war, post-First mm -hmm. Order, and the Jedi are in disarray. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of discussion around who are the Jedi, what are they doing, what's the state of the galaxy. Mm -hmm. And she's attempting to rebuild the Jedi Order based on the books, based on what she promised Luke. Mm -hmm. So that's where we're going. Ray Skywalker. <laughs> So Star Wars, it's great, right? No, it's not. Well, not anymore, but it used to be. A decade ago, the thought of Star Wars being reduced to a bunch of streaming shows nobody watches was unthinkable, but it is now. This is our reality. So what happened exactly? How did we get from point A to point B in such a short time? Well, you're in luck, because for the next however long this is going to be, I'm going to take you through the entire Star Wars timeline from 1977 to present day, so you too can understand the discourse surrounding the fandom, media buzz, and how a once great pop cultural phenomenon now lies in ruins. So in 1977, writer and director George Lucas created one of the greatest achievements in cinematic history, which we now know today as the original Star Wars trilogy. Dude, this trilogy is so good! It has such great characters. The visual effects change filmmaking forever. The story is timeless and enthralling. It was such a huge impact on me as a kid and to millions of others as well. Every single film in the originals is a 10 for me. Yes, even Return of the Jedi. If you don't like Return of the Jedi because uh, there's Ewoks or something or something nonsensical, like, shut up. You're just the you're not, you're not edgy, you're not cool, stop hating on Return of the Jedi, it rocks. These movies are goaded and they'll always be goaded. Alright, let's move on to the prequels. So George Lucas decides to make a prequel trilogy to the originals, going over how the Empire came into power and how Anakin Skywalker became Darth Vader. And as a Gen Zer, I'm just gonna come out and say it, these movies blow. So this is a very unpopular opinion to have in my age group, and I will say, I think there is some positives this trilogy brought us. There were some amazing fight scenes, John Williams' score is incredible, and at times even surpasses the originals. And it gave us the one, and only, Ian McGregor as Obi-Wan Kenobi. Can we get a round of applause for it? It's so freaking good, yeah. But that's it. Everything else is pretty bad. The whole trilogy was filled with great ideas, but done with terrible execution. As opposed to the tragic tale of a hero falling into villainy with Anakin, he was written as a spoiled, whiny teenager and his romantic relationship with Padme is embarrassing to watch. When these came out, many people hated them and thus hated George for what they did to their childhood. It didn't help that he also re-edited the original trilogy with CGI updates and terrible dubbings in the DVD and Blu-ray releases. Even to this day, you can't get an unedited copy of the original theatrically released movies on DVD or Blu-ray without it being a bootleg. So when the prequels ended after Revenge of the Sith, it wasn't until 2012 Star Wars was making the rounds in pop culture again because Disney bought Lucasfilm for $4 billion and announced a sequel trilogy was in the works. Nothing bad or controversial would happen to them, right? This new trilogy was being led by this woman, Kathleen Kennedy. She appointed famous director at the time J.J. Abrams to write and direct the first movie with The Force Awakens. And when it came out, people seemed to love it. Maybe a little too much. But as time went on, the holes in the story began to appear. It was a cheap copy of A New Hope, and the main character Rey was an overpowered girl boss who just knew everything about The Force. This movie is why the term Mary Sue became so popular to use, though most decided to look past this. After all, we were getting two more movies and they were going to clear everything up. Surely nothing awful would come of the- <laughs> what the fuck? 
Yeah, so with the next two movies, I think most can agree was the beginning of the end for not just Star Wars, but the entire brand as a whole. These two movies, The Last Jedi and The Rise of Skywalker, destroyed not only the sequel trilogy's story and characters, but the legacy characters as well. They created so many plot holes in terms of what the Force can do now. They destroyed Luke Skywalker as a character. They made Darth Vader's sacrifice to save his son pointless by bringing back Palpatine. How, you may ask? Well, my boy Poe Dameron says it best. Somehow Palpatine returned. Oh my word, how freaking embarrassing is that? If there's some people I feel bad for, it's the actors. Just look at them talking about the movies. No one is happy to be there. No one cares. They all are just acting like the series went off the rails and they want to get off as soon as possible. So, now, how do you think Disney was going to respond to this backlash that they were now getting from the fans? And to be honest, some of their own actors. Did they A, make a clear vision for what should happen in the Star Wars universe? B, apologize and admit that they didn't know what they were doing? Or C, call anyone who didn't like their product sexist, racist, or toxic, and on top of that, set up a million different shows and movies based on events and characters no one Star Wars television started out promising with the first season of Mandalorian and a proper final season to Clone Wars, showing you if you have it put in the right hands, Star Wars could be something special again. But as it is in Hollywood and at Disney, the moment something is successful is the time they need to come up and rework it to meet their expectations for a modern audience. The first to go was The Mandalorian. They made it to where the third season wouldn't make sense unless you watched this monstrosity. Then, they ruined Obi-Wan Kenobi in his own show by basically doing what they did to Luke in The Last Jedi, only this time to Obi-Wan. This show just looked really cheap and ugly as well. It was so poorly put together and had some of the worst editing and writing I've seen in a big budget production ever. This was when I officially threw the towel at Star Wars. This franchise had been ruined on all fronts. So listen, I didn't want this to be a video bashing the current state of Star Wars, but when looking over the past couple years, there's not much to praise. True, they made the final season of Clone Wars and Andor, which both give us some of the greatest moments and characters in the entire franchise, but now it's a little too late. The Bad Batch was good, but it's mostly just filler. The Mandalorian Season 3 was a complete flop, Ahsoka was boring, and I know they brought back characters from the animated shows, but it was just fan service again. Oh look, there's Anakin! Oh look, there's Rex! So what? It's just nostalgia bait. It's the same crap they've been doing for the past decade, and you people keep falling for it. It's not working anymore for me. And even though there's still brain-dead Disney adults supporting this crap, it's not working for the vast majority of Star Wars fans anymore. So what happened? Who's to blame for the collapse of Star Wars? Did it start with George Lucas having too much control over the prequels? Or did it start with Disney and Kathleen Kennedy messing everything up with their political pandering? Or was it just simple greed, thinking that Star Wars movies would be successful regardless? In short, yes to all. I think the seeds were planted for the fall way back during the start of the prequels. The fan backlash, while justified in some ways, must have pissed off George a lot. While many now love and praise Lucas for the prequels and what he tried to do, it doesn't change the fact that for nearly a decade millions complained about how he ruined their childhoods with those movies. And then with him feeling betrayed by the fandom, he sold it to Disney to just move on. The problem was is that he didn't leave it to people who actually cared about Star Wars. He gave it to a multimedia conglomerate and let the creative decisions be led by women and directors whose greed, incompetence, and political opinions dictate where the franchise should go rather than simply tell a good story with a clear vision. But where do we go from here? How do we save Star Wars? I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I don't think there is a way. At least not right now. Like Star Wars, superhero movies have been taking a nosedive over the years as well. Hardly anyone is watching these shows and movies that are made, but why is that? You could blame it on the quality now, I certainly would, but I think there's something more obvious. There are so many things coming out. Same goes for Star Wars. Think about it, over the course of 30 years, Star Wars had six movies made. That's it, six. There were small things like the Ewok show no one watched, 
or that Samurai Jack Clone Wars that was still good, but it was really short-lived and just went by. And then there was whatever this is. We celebrate a day of peace, a day of harmony. But the point still stands. Less is sometimes more. Us fans need a break from anything Star Wars. I love it just as much as the next guy, but we need to learn when enough is enough. And more importantly, Disney needs to know when enough is enough. We don't need a movie every single year and two shows that are a spin-off sequel prequel to another show or movie. What Star Wars needs right now is a long break. In my opinion, 10 to 20 years minimum. And then, whether it be through movies or TV, let people who are talented and actually care about the franchise they're adapting tell an engaging story that doesn't set out to divide people based on political beliefs, doesn't set out to make something that's just fan service and nothing else. Just make something that's genuine, fun, and relatable. Make something that can bring people together again, and then maybe Star Wars can be the juggernaut it once was.